Hello friends, this is Miss Mihu with The Big Garden and today is our final lesson, lesson number eight of our summer programming. And today we are talking about my favorite subject of all and that is seeds. Now we have four different types of corn seeds. This is what we're used to. I bought this today at a roadside farmer's market. It's some good old Nebraska sweet corn and it's delicious. But I want to teach you about all the other varieties of corn and how they can be in so many different colors. So let's take a look at some. Okay friends, so here is our corn cob. Now underneath this corn, this part right here is called your husk and it protects the silk which covers the kernels. Now this is a typical sweet corn. I bought this this morning in Omaha, Nebraska, and we are known for our corn in this state. But unfortunately, a lot of our corn is what you call GMO, genetically modified. And what we like to focus on growing are seeds that have been around for a long time and that are significant to people and the community in which they're grown. So I have four examples here for you to look at today. And they're not your typical yellow, white kernels. So the first one I'd like to look at is this one right here. This is a very ancient corn. It's called Oaxaca Green Dent Corn, and it's from Central Mexico. And it is the favorite of the Zapotec people. And they use this corn in their tamales and their tortillas. And what they do is they grind it down and make a cornmeal. This is actually a corn tortilla. So you take corn, like this and you grind it and you make a powdery like flour and then you can mix it with water and make tortillas. This right here is a popcorn. I found it right next to all the bags of microwave popcorn and the reason I chose it is because it was local and it's purple. Now when you pop this popcorn, the kernels still come out white and fluffy although they do have little purple specks on them, which is really fun. This one right here is a really famous one that is what we call an hybridized flint corn, um, which is also known as an Indian corn. And what this person did was they allowed um, many different strains of Indian corn to cross pollinate and what they came up with was this beautiful um, translucent, which means that you can kind of see through it a little bit, translucent gem-like corns. So right here we have a purple, we have a pink. The last corn that I want to show you is called Southwest Flower Corn. And this corn is good for grinding into flour, kind of like cornmeal. All right, friends, we are out in my garden and I would like to show you some of our fresh ears that are growing. Right here, this is what we call our silk. And each one of these strings connects to a single kernel, just like what I was showing you inside. And each kernel ends up being a seed that you can replant to grow a whole plant of corn like this. What this silk needs is this cool stuff up here. These are the corn pollen, and within these, they're called anthers, is a bunch of little pollen. And what needs to happen is these little pieces of pollen need to fall down on the silk. And each one of these pollens pollinates a piece of silk and turns into a kernel, which when it's all done, ends up being a corn cob. <laughs> Seed saving is important because it saves growers money and it helps protect plant diversity. Large seed companies have fought to own the rights to certain seeds. 
forcing growers to have to buy from them year after year. Seed saving is an act of resistance. Here we have my daughter Ruby. Her grandmother taught her how to save corn seed and now she's teaching me how to save corn seed. If we wanted to save our corn seed so we could replant that same corn next year. things are from my garden and here everybody recognizes these these are cherries so cherries are fun they have a great seed what's inside here is the cherry seed you have your own little exploration while you're eating food all fruit and all veggies have seeds here's a yellow tomato from my garden and this one's very ripe so the seeds they're in there, and you can see them. They kind of have a gelatin around them, but there's the seeds there. Now this right here is what you call a ground cherry, and the ground cherry is like a little paper lantern. And you pop this little cherry out of here, and as you can see, it's kind of an orangish yellow. It's very sweet, super good. There's a lot of little seeds in this one. Oh, there we go. Now, last but not least is this pepper that I just picked. If this were a hot pepper, I would not be grabbing any of this without gloves on because the seeds are what hold the heat of the pepper. So inside my pepper, I see the pepper seeds. Well, I could actually go outside and plant these, give it some water, give it some sun, and see what it does. This is milkweed seed, and like we've learned in previous lessons, milkweed plant is what our friends, the monarch butterflies, like to lay their eggs on. This is an important seed, and as you can see in the picture, it is a beautiful seed. It projects out of this pod, through all these very soft, silky fibers, and it explodes, and the seeds go everywhere in the fall. And so in the springtime, all those milkweed plants grow together, um, and usually if you find one milkweed plant, there's at least a dozen more. A call to action. Next time you sit down for your lunch or dinner, and you have your veggies and your fruit on your plate, I'd like you to see if you can find the seed. Second call to action. It's almost seed saving time. So you have about a month or two before you can really start collecting seeds. But in the meantime, you can start collecting baggies or jars or some way to store the seeds that you want to save this year. Make sure you have a good marker and some tape and maybe even a little box to keep all your seeds in. All right, friends, I will see you next time.